This young guy is paid to catch a thief, but soon he realizes that the thief is not an ordinary criminal, but a warrior who has the power to destroy the whole universe. Long time ago in an alternate universe, there was chaos in both the mortal and immortal worlds. Battle raged and thousands were slaughtered. Finally, the humans and immortal lords of heaven united to get out of this calamity. The order of the lords was set and each one carved a home in rock. In this way, the world returned to peace. But it is not for a long time. And when the disaster returns, only one man can stop that. It's Erlang Shen. He is currently working as a bounty hunter, and he catches wanted criminals for money. But for the past few months, his team hasn't gotten a single job, and they are starving. They have been flying around to find work, but they can't do it any longer, as they are also running low on fuel. Erlang Shen was trying to figure out a solution when he suddenly received a letter. It's a job invitation. They need to catch a man in a nearby realm, but the payment is really low. Erlang Shen agrees anyway as it will be better than starving. They arrive at their destination and Erlang Shen starts looking for his target. He eventually finds him but it's a young immortal boy paired up with a scary demon. Erlang Shen explains that he is just doing it for money, but the boy still gets triggered and sends the demon to kill Erlang Shen. He underestimated his enemy. Erlang Shen is a skilled fighter and he defeats the demon in just one blow. Afterward, he proceeds to complete his job, but the boy flies away in his jet. Erlang Shen also grabs his jet and rushes after the target. He is just inches away when he runs out of fuel. Luckily, his teammates reach there for help. After getting captured, the boy starts begging for release and even offers five times more money than the payment Erlang Shen will get. However, Erlang Shen doesn't cheat and gets the boy arrested. After receiving the payment, he goes back to his ship, but another client is already waiting for him there. This time, it's a beautiful lady that seems to belong to a rich family. She wants Erlang Shen to catch a thief who stole her sister's treasure. Erlang Shen doesn't reply because the lady is not giving him the full details. The lady gives up and decides to share the whole story. Her name is Wan Luo. She was really close to her sister, but her sister suddenly disappeared 12 years ago. All she left behind was a family heirloom. It's a magical lantern which holds great powers. After stealing the lantern, the thief named Chen Xiang flew to the Square Pot Fairy Island. Wan Luo offers a good payment, so Erlang Shen agrees to this job, but he wonders, despite being so rich, why she has chosen a cheap bounty hunter like him. After she leaves, Erlang Shen starts preparing to fly to the Square Pot Fairy Island. He has no idea how dangerous the thief is. After stealing the lantern, Chen Xiang sneaks into a ship to get the magical fuel. He triggers a fight among the pirates and uses this chance to get to the basement where the fuel is kept. It's guarded by a giant monster with several eyes. Chen Xiang doesn't get scared at all and attacks the monster. After defeating him, he uses a special container to suck in all the magical fuel. Once his job is done, he escapes the ship before anyone can catch him. Meanwhile, Erlang Shen reaches the Square Pot Island and stops at a casino to have a drink. There, he meets a monkey warrior who recognizes Erlang Shen right away. He tells everyone that Erlang Shen is the legendary warrior, Yang Jian. Almost 12 years ago, Yang Jian's sister, the goddess Yang Chan, fell in love with a mortal which was against the laws of heaven. As a punishment, Yang Jian trapped her under Mount Hua, but Yang Chan fought back using the magical lotus lantern and blinded Yang Jian's all-seeing third eye, and also took away his magical powers. The monkey makes fun of Yang Jian for being a ruthless brother, but Yang Jian doesn't say a word. The monkey and his mates were arrested years ago, and now they are ready to take their revenge because Yang Jian is not powerful enough to beat them. Luckily, Yang Jian's old friends, the Mo brothers, save him. They heard about Yang Jian's job and advised him to stay away from Chen Xiang. However, Yang Jian is not afraid and leaves the casino to continue his mission. He passes by Chen Xiang without knowing who he is. Chen Xiang is surrounded by the pirates from whom he stole the magical fuel. He gives the fuel to Yang Jian and starts fighting the pirates. Yang Jian has to fight too, because the pirates assume that he is Chen Xiang's partner. After the fight, Chen Xiang asks back for the fuel and leaves. The Mo brothers are passing by the bridge and notice Yang Jian. They are surprised that Yang Jian still hasn't figured out the real identity of Chen Xiang. He is one of the disciples of their spiritual master, Yu Ding. They advise Yang Jian to visit the master to know the whole truth. Master Yu Ding is delighted to see him after such a long time and asks about his third eye. Yang Jian was just a baby when Yu Ding took him in as a disciple. Twelve years ago he sealed the Lotus Peak, but the Heaven Realm is getting weak since then. 
and the demons arose. Yang Jian asks about Chen Xiang, and his jaw drops after knowing that Chen Xiang is his nephew, whom he brought to the master himself. Yu Ding never thought that Chen Xiang would turn into a murderous traitor. He joined hands with another rebellious disciple, Shen Gongbao, and killed the head disciple. Yu Ding preserved the dead body to find a way to cure it. Meanwhile, Chen Xiang escaped the temple and stole the magic lotus lantern. After getting the magic fuel, he meets Shen Gongbao and asks for the next steps. Shen Gongbao tells him to get the lid. Moreover, he also reveals that Yang Jian is his uncle who trapped his mother in the Lotus Peak. If Chen Xiang turns on the lantern again, he can save his mother. Shen Gongbao has completely brainwashed Chen Xiang and made him believe that Yang Jian and all the other disciples are his enemies. On the other hand, Yang Jian himself is confused about what's happening. To get the answers, he goes to meet Wan Luo who gave him this task. When he reaches her realm, Wan Luo is busy giving a flying dance performance, the most skillful and elegant one has ever seen. After the performance, Wan Luo returns to her room and gets shocked to see Yang Jian there. He still feels a connection with her and wonders where they have met before. But first of all, he needs to know about the lantern. He asks Wan Luo why she lied about the lantern. Instead of answering, Wan Luo uses a special magic to put Yang Jian to sleep. In his dream, he sees his late mother who tells him to split the mountains. When he wakes, Wan Luo is already gone, but she left a note that tells the address where Chen Xiang can be found. Yang Jian immediately reaches there and recalls the time when he left his nephew at the temple. Chen Xiang reveals that the head disciple was a cruel man who beat him every day and starved him for months. He even abused Chen Xiang's parents. Yang Jian feels sorry to hear this and explains that he had no idea of the situation. The master told him not to meet his nephew during his training. Therefore, Yang Jian couldn't keep a check. Before he can tell the rest of the story, the Mo brothers reach there to arrest Chen Xiang for the crime of murdering his teacher. Yang Jian helps his nephew escape so the Mo brothers want to arrest him too. Yang Jian is willing to surrender once his job is done, but the Mo brothers don't listen to him and even bring their third brother to help in capturing Yang Jian. They use their strongest magic of fiery winds and heavenly strings to capture Yang Jian and put him in heaven's prison. There he meets the boy he captured during his last job. He seems like a friendly person, but Yang Jian doesn't feel like talking to anyone. The Mo brothers, whom he considered his friends, have put him in such a misery. Yang Jian stays at the prison for a night, but the next day his crew arrives to rescue him. He still has some magical powers and uses them to break out of the cell. Then he gets back to his ship and escapes the prison. Yang Jian had grabbed a map from Chen Xiang's hideout, and now he wants to go there. It's a lighthouse in another realm where Chen Xiang and Shen Gongbao have already reached. The lantern's lid shines continuously so someone used it in the lighthouse to guide ships. As they enter the lighthouse, they find one of the Mo brothers, Li Qing, waiting for them. He mentions the phoenixes that are trapped in Mount Hua. If they escape, the universe will face great chaos, but Shen Gongbao believes that it will happen sooner or later, so better to do it now and save Chen Xiang's mother. Li Qing doesn't agree and does split body magic to summon his spirit monster. Shen Gongbao does the same and gets ready to fight till his last breath. Meanwhile, Chen Xiang rushes to get the lantern lid. Li Qing notices him and starts attacking him instead. Chen Xiang has also learned split body magic from Shen Gongbao, and he uses it to defend himself. Shen Gongbao is healed by his tiger and joins Chen Xiang in defeating Mo Li Qing. Afterward, they grab the lantern lid and escape the lighthouse. Another enemy has followed them and he attacks them with a thousand light swords. Shen Gongbao takes the attack on himself and tells Chen Xiang to run away with the lid. After a while, Yang Jian reaches there and meets Shen Gongbao. While taking his last breath, Shen Gongbao tells him that Chen Xiang has gone to Mount Li in the mortal realm. Yang Jian feels sorry over Shen Gongbao's death as they both trained together at the temple for years. Unfortunately, he couldn't be saved. After getting Chen Xiang's address, Yang Jian unites with his crew and asks for help in reaching the mortal realm. Yang Jian had also brought the boy from prison, and he finally came in handy. He takes them to a smuggler island and pays a creepy guy to open the portal to the mortal world. Yang Jian lands in the Chang'an dynasty and starts looking for Chen Xiang. He is shocked to see that the mortal realm is still at war. Meanwhile, Chen Xiang meets with Wan Luo and shows her all the parts of the lantern he brought. She was on his side from the start, but lied to Yang Jian. Luckily, Yang Jian reaches there in time and finally gets a chance to tell the whole truth to Chen Xiang. The lotus peak of Mount Hua sits on top of the nest of phoenixes. 
They are the spirit of great fire and have world-destroying powers. If they break out, everything will end. Yang Jian's mother gave the Lotus Lantern to Yang Chan so she can look after the peak. But 12 years ago, the phoenixes grew restless, and the lantern couldn't keep them down. Yang Jian was told by his master to help his sister, but the phoenixes were too powerful and shattered the lantern. At the last minute, Yang Chan jumped on the Lotus Peak to stop the phoenixes herself. She asked Yang Jian to take care of her son and seal the Lotus Peak. Yang Jian grabbed his magical axe and drove it on the rock to seal the peak. Since then, most of his powers are gone. It wasn't because Yang Chan married a mortal. Even her mother married a mortal too, but there's no punishment against that. Chen Xiang feels ashamed of accusing his uncle, but there's still more to know. Wan Luo is also a goddess, and she used to be a close friend of Yang Jian's mother. She takes them to Mount Hua to tell them the rest of the story. Master Yu Ding told the goddesses to suppress the phoenixes because if they escape, his beloved temple will collapse. He is the selfish man who lied to his disciples about the phoenixes destroying the world. There's no such thing. Yu Ding tricked everybody. Wan Luo asks Yang Jian to help in splitting Mount Hua and rescue his sister. But Yang Jian still doubts her. He wants to confront his master before taking the next step because Wan Luo has also done some evil deeds. She was the one who appeared in Yang Jian's dream as his mother and motivated him to split the mountains. She is also the one behind the murder of the head disciple and Shen Gongbao, because they had strange wounds on their bodies that resemble the silken magic Wan Luo performs. Wan Luo accepts her crimes, but she has her own reasons. She killed the head disciple to help Chen Xiang escape, and Shen Gongbao was brutally injured when she found him so she killed him to ease his pain. She did everything to split the mountains. Chen Xiang can't believe that he is being lied to all the time. He loses his temper and summons his spirit monster. Wan Luo runs away, but Yang Jian helps Chen Xiang calm down. When Chen Xiang wakes up, he realizes that Yang Jian has taken off the string from his wrist, which no one else could remove. It is a special thread which his mother wove with her own hair. It's a wick to light the Lotus Lantern. They must visit Mount Hua to get the bottom of all this. On their way, they also visit the place where Chen Xiang lived as a baby. This makes him miss his mother even more. Yang Jian also notices his axe that is still stuck in the mountains. As they get near the Lotus Peak, they notice someone already standing there. Yang Jian tells Chen Xiang to run away while he gets stuck in the magic trap set up by Yu Ding and his disciples. It's the Tai Chi scroll which feeds on one's fears and tricks them with their deepest desires. Poor Yang Jian keeps traveling through his bitter past and witnesses the time when his mother sacrificed herself to seal the Lotus Peak. She said that the destiny of the women in their family is to hold down the mountains and secure peace in the world. Then Yang Jian shifts to the time when his master made him split Mount Tao, but it didn't bring back his mother. Then he was ordered to secure Mount Hua. In this way, Yu Ding kept using Yang Jian to fulfill his own needs. The mothers of his family sacrifice themselves to suppress the phoenixes, while the sons struggle all their lives to split the mountains. The phoenixes may bring chaos, but only after that the eternal peace will return. However, Yu Ding is not willing to sacrifice his beloved cave for that. Yang Jian can't believe how selfish his master is. He also tried to keep Chen Xiang unaware of his origin, so he never tried to split the mountains, and now he will kill all of them to protect himself. Saying this, Yu Ding also traps Chen Xiang and Wan Luo in the scroll, and orders his disciple to attack them. Luckily, Chen Xiang has brought the Lotus Lantern with him, and he uses its power to defend themselves. Yang Jian notices the phoenixes partially escaping the seal. He uses their powers to open his third eye and escape the scroll. Afterwards, he summons his spirit monster to defeat his enemies. Yu Ding and his disciples also summon their spirits and attack Yang Jian together. Yang Jian has become more powerful than ever and he finally pulls out his axe from the mountains. Then he uses it to split the seal and free the phoenixes. Once the smoke subsides, Chen Xiang immediately starts looking for his mother. As soon as he sees her, he rushes to hug his mother, but she is just an illusion. Yang Chan still has to stay with the phoenixes and play her part in maintaining peace in the world. She asks Yang Jian to take care of her son and leaves. Chen Xiang cries in pain and yearns for his mother's love. Yang Jian tells him that his mother has already become one of the phoenixes. As long as Chen Xiang is here and there's life on earth, Yang Chan will come back.